Hey everybody, my name is Puri Arami and in this video we are going to talk about creating this glitch effect in Cinema 40 R20. Now we're going to focus on the first glitch that you're seeing here and let's jump right in and get started. Now I expect you to know a little bit about 3D and how Cinema 40 works, have a basic understanding of modeling because we're not going to talk about all those details. So if you're a beginner, this tutorial is not for you and if this is your first time working with 3D, uh, there are a lot of tutorials that explain the basics. I advise you highly to watch those and then come back here. Okay, let's jump in. Now, what we're going to do, I already created it, is create a cube. Let me delete it and do it again. Uh, we're going to create a cube. going to place it right here. going to turn it to 5 by 5 by 5. And we're going to use this cube as our glitch effect, which we, which we are seeing here. Okay. Now, once we got our cube ready, it's important to do the next thing, and that's basically turn it into an editable object. And let me check something out. Okay, and then we're gonna change its axis and move it all the way to this edge. Because later on, we're gonna scale this with our uh, plane effector. And we don't want it to scale both ways. And that's the reason why we put it on the right side. So it only scales in one direction. Okay. Now let's turn our and enable axis off again and continue from there. Now, the next thing we are going to do is add a cloner. Now, if you're not familiar with MoGraph at all, uh, you have a few options that you can use to create certain effects. And on those MoGraphs, you can add effectors, which create a certain effect that you can fully control. And I'm going to show it to you right away. I'm going to add a cloner MoGraph. I'm going to put my cube in the cloner. And the moment I do, you see that my cube disappears here. And it actually is spawning right now through our cloner. I'm going to drag it out. And you see that we got three iterations of our clone. Let's click on a cloner and go to object and see what's happening right away. And the reason why we are seeing is seeing this is because our mode is currently on linear. If we were to change this to radial or grid array or even honeycomb array, you would see that it would change accordingly. So, okay. So let's change it back to linear for now and talk a little bit about what's going on here. We got a lot of options, but which we can control and keep in mind that options and the controls change depending on the mode you're in. Okay. So how can we actually make these cubes pop out of the TV? It's simple. What we need to do first is change our mode to object. And the moment I do so, all of my iterations disappear. And that's fine. Let's leave this as is for now and deselect it and go and create a plane. Great. We're going to use this plane as the object where our clones iterate from. And I'm going to make this as big as the TV screen, which we'll be using. I'm going to place it right here for now. Now, let me bring it a little bit to the front. And I'm going to change my perspective and go to the front view. So I have a better sense of skill and size. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. And don't worry about it being perfect and fitting perfect we can adjust that later this is fine for now okay now that we got this we go back to our cloner and we have the object uh, the option to add the object that we want here so let's click on this arrow and click our plane and immediately you see that the cubes are spawning or iterating on the plane itself right and once we have it selected the cloner object gives us a lot of options. So we can actually leave a lot of stuff as they are. But what I do want to change is the clone types from iterate to random. Right now it doesn't do much, but let's say if you had multiple objects here, it would randomly spawn them instead of iterating them. I always like to put it on random. You don't have to for this case or in this case, but it really depends on what you're trying to do, okay? So next thing is the count, which we're going to adjust. Let's talk about this for a second, because in Cinema 4D, a lot of people stop at 100, but you don't have to, you're not limited, because 
while the selection part goes up to 200, you can actually up the count to any amount that you want. And this might crash my PC. Let's bring this down to maybe 250. That's better. Okay. Um, now we've got 250 objects spawning on our plane. Great. We're almost there. And what we're seeing right now is that these objects are spawning actually on the right side of the plane. So what, we, what can we do? We could, for instance, turn our plane and this actually fixes our problem immediately. So let's do this. We could have later also used the minus. So instead of using uh, one minus one to spawn them on the other side, but this is good. So just rotate the plane and you should be good to go. Okay. Next thing up is making sure that these planes are animated. And the way to do this is adding an effector to your cloner. Now, what's an effector? If you go to your MoGraph effector and look at the blue icons, you see all of the effectors that could actually influence your cloner. And for this video, we're gonna use the plane cloner because this is one of the most simple ones to use and it fits perfectly for we're gonna, what we are trying to do. Now, the moment I add this plane effector on our cloner, and you can add it by making sure that the cloner is selected the moment you add it, or going to your effectors and click and dragging it here. Okay, the moment I add this, you see that all of my cubes kind of uh, are moved out of my area where I had them in the beginning. And I can fix this by going to my parameters in my plane, turning off the position, and you see that they immediately pop back, right? The reason why this happens is because the plane effector has three parameters, the position scale and the rotation, which you can control with falloffs. So it always, or um, by default, has the position scale on, which result in your objects being um, moved from their original spot by 100 centimeters. So I'm gonna turn it off, off once again. And what we want to use here is the skill transform option. And you can turn this on and you have a few options here. You have the absolute skill, uniform skill, which we're not gonna use, but if you were to turn on uniform skill and you were to type in the skill, you would see that all of the axes would skill uniform, right? So let's turn that off. What we want to use now is a set skill. And I'm gonna put that on 50 maybe, and we can adjust it later, but 50 looks good. And it's actually what we want. Okay, but they're all evenly uh, scaled and it kind of looks boring this way. So how to fix this issue? And this is where the fall off tool, which has been added in, in R20 of Cinema 4D comes into play. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is add one of the falloff options that we have and we're gonna add a field. And what I want to use for here is a shader field. And what the shader field actually does, it allows you to add shaders with which affect um, the parameters of your plane. I can't make it simpler than that, okay? So with your uh, shader field selected, you see that you have a few options and you can actually uh, adjust these later on. But for now, we want to go to our field. And this is what actually controls all these cubes. Click on shader and add a noise. The moment you do, you see that all of the cubes are kind of getting scaled again. And it's starting to look kind of like the original video that we had here. Now, the great thing is that we actually didn't apply anything. So we have full control over all of our objects. So if I were to scale this cube, uh, you would see that it would actually get scaled also in my MoGraph, right? So that's great. So let's go back to the shader and we see in the field tag that we got this noise pattern. And we can actually change and adjust this any way that we want and use a pattern which fits what we are trying to do. Now, if I were to click play, nothing would happen because my noise is not animated. Now you could animate this by hand and adjust all the settings, but we got a great option in Cinema 4D which is called animation speed. And I'm gonna put that on five right now. And 
you would think that if I were to play a spray, something would happen, but it's not. Because we need to go back to our shader field. And underneath, in our field tab, you see the refresh option and we're going to turn on frame. This means that um, our animation is going to get refreshed every frame. And when we play, press play now, suddenly we got a cool animation going on based on our noise. And while this is playing, we can actually adjust a few things. We can up the contrast or we can lower it. It's fully up to us and what we want, right? We can also scale the noise to lower the individual movements of each cube. But for now, I'm going to put this on 100 and that's fine. So we might want to go back to our plane and maybe even go to 100, right? We might want to make it pop out even more. And this is starting to look like something that we had once again in our original video. Now, we are missing a few things. And the first one is the pop in and pop out effect. Now, the great thing about this whole whole effectors is that you can fully control them in your cloner. So we're going to go back to our cloner. And if we were to go to uh, object, you see that we still have everything that we wanted to do. And if we were to go to our effectors, you see that the plane effector, which we added, um, added gave us an option here to control the amount of its force or uh, effect, which is applied to our cloner. So this way we can actually fully control everything, right? So let's go to zero and add a keyframe by pressing on this round button. And this is 100%. Excuse me, I'm going to put this down to zero and click again. And once it reads, once it's read, it means that there is a keyframe in place. And we're going to go to 90, going to bring this all the way back up to 100%. And we are going to add another keyframe and at 190, we're going to bring it all the way back down again and place it on zero. Okay, great. So if we were to play this now, you see that we kind of get the effect which we had in the video, right? Great. But the thing is that these cubes are not disappearing and there are multiple ways, multiple ways of doing so. But what I like to do is actually control the count. So right here, it's actually on a 250. So I'm going to make this zero. I'm going to add a keyframe. I'm going to go to 90 again, turn this to 250, add a keyframe. And I'm going to go to frame 190 and add another keyframe. Now you will see that they kind of uh, get added as the animation goes. And we will fix this in a second. As you can see, they pop out and kind of disappear. So this might look like something that you want or not, but I would like to control this by going to 10 frames and actually maximizing this to 250. Adding this keyframe here and going to 180 and uh, adding another keyframe with a max amount. And this way they kind of disappear at the end. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is just hide this plane. I don't want to see it because I want to create the feeling that these objects are spawning from the TV screen. And we can actually control it fully and any way that we want. Let me just adjust this a little bit and right here a little bit and great. So if I were to make a quick render right now, let's see what happens. You're probably already seeing it right now, but you can see that I, I got a, a material on the glass screen, but I don't have any material on these objects, which result in this weird effect. So let's fix that. So I'm going to add the material with, uh, which I already created, this noise material. Let's go through it, uh, which has a color. And that's just to create the depth effect and a luminous. And we can control the same as we did with the noise um, in our shader field. So I added an animation speed and then you have to go to the editor animation preview and make sure this is turned on. Otherwise you won't be seeing it. And afterwards, let's just apply this to our cloner. 
And if I were to render this now, I'm going to turn the uh, physical renderer down for a second because I just want to get a fast preview. You would see that it all looks like they're part of the screen. Let's wait for the render. Now the reason it looks like this is because I'm using the lower uh, preview and we're getting the ambient occlusion affecting these. So what I want to do right now is make sure that I get this uh, TV screen, the cloner that we have and all of these and just make them a group by pressing Alt G, adding a Cinema 4D tag composition and making sure that they're not seen by the ambient occlusion. And if you were to render this again, you will see right now that it looks a lot better than what we had here. Now I see that the ambient occlusion is not affecting our cubes, right? And this is not rendering an animation, which we don't want. Let's turn that off. And that's actually how you can create this effect. So it's really that simple and it's up to you uh, and what you want to do with it. All right. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the second effect. And that's this one. Let me press play a second and how to create this. And we are actually using, uh, excuse me, I accidentally started After Effects. Um, we can actually do that the same way, simple, by using a, a displacer. But we're going to talk about that in another video. For now, I hope this video gives you a sense of how we did this and how you can create this effect. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment area and I'll get back to you. And uh, i see you in the next video. Bye-bye.